All right, well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Morgan? Stick around and find out. I don't know, are there any other AI? That's the only AI song I feel like I can go to, especially for a movie like this, which is different from something like, say, Short Circuit, and I'll explain why in a minute. I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of Morgan, which just recently was released, uh, at least on Redbox. I don't know how long it's been on uh, uh, Blu-ray, but the synopsis for this one reads, A corporate risk management consultant must decide whether or not to terminate an artificially created humanoid being. Uh, a few more details. There are these scientists that are working for a company, and they're kind of out in the woods at a secure location in the middle of, you know, who knows where. And uh, something has gone wrong with this AI, you know, bio type of humanoid, you know, synthetic being that they've created. It's uh, that's resulted in someone being horribly injured. Uh, and so now the, the corporation that owns that facility and is paying for that, you know, project is uh, sending in a risk management consultant to evaluate the situation and decide whether or not it's worth the program continuing given this problem that just came up. So uh, so the, the the movie is basically about this risk management consultant coming in and, and trying to assess along with the audience the nature of this uh, humanoid looking girlish thing that uh, is, uh, is a synthetic human of some kind and figure out if it's uh, if it's going to be safe, let, let alone whether or not it has true feelings or whatever. I mean, those are the same kinds of questions that are, you know, being asked in this in this movie, but th they're not the main questions. I think the main question is whether or not this thing is safe. Um, so I found this to be a thought-provoking sci-fi suspense thriller. It has like a quiet level of tension with these bursts of shocking and brutal violence that, uh, and the whole thing kind of builds to a, a really action-heavy final act uh, with like some combat sequences that are, I was like, wow, they're, they're really kind of going into an action mode with this movie. I didn't quite see that coming. Um, and as with many AI-based plots, I was trying to figure out the whole time, where does the writer stand on the issue of AI? You know, do they think that uh, artificially in, our artificial intelligences uh, have the same value as human beings, and therefore, if we get to the point of actually creating a real, you know, intelligence or whatever, that we should invest emotion in it, we sh they should be given human rights and things like that, you know. Uh, and you can kind of get a sense of uh, that with some stories, like say, usually in cautionary tales or like sci-fi thrillers and stuff like that, it's this it's it lands on the side of they're not really humans there's something not right about them whereas like in comedies or sometimes dramas or you know you'll have like short circuit you know that's like heartwarming and we're supposed to feel empathy and want to you know invest value in this uh, artificial intelligence um, although short circuits a little bit different arguably because there was this kind of maybe magical bolt of lightning that gave it light life uh, but then you've got another character like data in the Star Trek series that we're obviously meant to uh, feel empathy for and uh, see as having value on the same level that a human has value. We're obviously meant to emotionally invest in Data as a character and as a person in the same way that we would any other member of the Star Trek crew. Um, and so you don't usually find that in you know in comedies and in dramas that uh, we're supposed to look at machine, even really convincing machine life, and not emotionally invest. Usually when we're supposed to be cautious about them, it's in you know these kind of sci-fi thrillers. And and I think that's ultimately where this one kind of lands. But they they do keep kind of a tension in uh, in throughout the story. You know there are times where I was like, oh you know you know is this thing human? Is it not? You know and um, do I feel sorry for this AI girl that's being evaluated or not? Is she just a machine or does she have a soul? And I believe that the non-physical component uh, that, that humans have is a defining trait for true humanity, true personhood, as it were. But I think that if we ever cloned humans, they would very possibly have souls generated for them, as that somehow seems to happen during the biological process that we naturally use to uh, to uh, create life. Um, so given that uh, a hybrid kind of part cloning and part like machine nano parts are used to create this this girl, this artificial in intelligence thing, uh, I felt it easier to uh, to consider 
that possibility of her being a person. Um, although in the end, I, I personally lean towards seeing her as purely a machine made of organic material. Given that this story is more, I think, of a cautionary tale than a heartwarming, heartwarming, excuse me, uh, toaster hugging story like you know, short circuit or like I said, all the pretty much all the data character subplots from Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, I was riveted throughout this movie, though. It's uh, it's building tension. It's it's intense brutality. Uh, it, lots of interesting questions that are being asked. It takes a direction at the end that I've seen before in AI stories, so it wasn't like, wow, that's so mind-bending or whatever, that they went in this direction or crazy or whatever. Uh, but I, I was just uncertain enough whether or not they would go in a given direction that they could, that I still wondered about where things were going to go toward the end, and, and I still enjoyed it. Um, as far as the cast goes, I'm really going to only comment on two. Uh, the first is Kate Mara, and she's great as this tough-as-nails risk management consultant. Uh, her performance is subtle and serious, but in a in a good way, uh, and it, it made me always want to know more about who she was and uh, what drove her to do the kind of work that she did. I loved watching her do her job with such... Uh, capability and uncompromising effectiveness and dedication to to her work and she was just good at what she did you know and at the end of the especially a, a cool character in the last kind of 30 minutes just like dude she's awesome you know uh, really so I really enjoyed uh, watching her throughout the movie and then uh, Anya Taylor Joy plays Morgan the uh, the uh, girl thing artificial intelligence <laughs> I never know what to what to call these characters, you know, because it, it is a girl in the sense that it's you know it's played by a, a an actress, you know. But uh, but she she plays Morgan with both vulnerability and like this great creep factor, uh, and it just kept me locked on her in uh, in every scene that she was in. Really enjoyed her performance. Uh, the rest of the cast I thought was solid too. There was nobody that gave me problems or, or took me out of the story. Always nice to see Paul Giamatti. He was brought in to kind of do what he does, which is to kind of play the person that gets on other people's nerves. <laughs> No, um, and so I always love seeing him do something other than that, and yet he's so great at it that I never object to seeing him come into a, a movie to do that once again. Um, okay, let's talk about the stunts and the visuals. The visuals are mostly about people getting brutally maimed or killed. Um, it's not a big special effects kind of movie. Um, and even in those instances, they often imply with sound more than they show on camera, which uh, made me cringe even more at times. I thought they, you know, the violence was handled in a way that uh, that wasn't like over the top, and yet at the same time, I was like, Ugh, you know, as I was as I was watching <laughs> some stuff. The last twenty minutes, as I mentioned, had some great action movie kind of vibes to it, some hand to hand combat that I didn't expect to see in a movie like this, but it really kept me on the edge of my seat. You know, uh, it's not a big budget movie at all, but it never feels cheap or lacking the budget that it needs to tell the story in the effective way that it intends. Um, okay, so I always try to ask myself, is there anything of moral, philosophical, or, or spiritual significance going on in the themes of, of this movie that uh, might trigger worthwhile thought or conversation? And, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, as is the case with many st uh, stories that are based around the idea of artificial intelligence and its relationship to personhood um, or human life, I much prefer AI stories as cost cautionary tales. It just fits with my worldview better. Uh, in this movie, a bunch of uh, toaster-hugging scientists totally lose objectivity and necessary caution, and they get themselves in a world of hurt because of it. Uh, we may, I don't know, I'm not a futurist, we may live to see the day when a machine or software can fool us into believing it's human, particularly if we're not looking at it, if we're interacting it through some kind of a auditory medium or like a, a computer medium or something like that. I, I think there's already been some examples where that has happened in like a text format we can be fooled or uh, so I, I don't think we're far from that happening over the phone and maybe even in, in uh, closer interactions with machines now um, it's possible that in our lifetimes we can be flawlessly fooled into believing that a machine or software program is a is a human being right person um, but we need to still have some healthy caution about that especially if we're ready at some point to pronounce such machines as persons on the same level that humans are persons. Uh, we may be able to create flawlessly convincing simulations of humanity someday, but they will still be simulations. And contrary to relativistic philosophy, um, reality is not defined as that 
which you know we can experience or that that or that we interpret with our limited senses that things can just be kind of real for us and our be, we perceive something as real therefore it is real it is real um, that's a, that that's a broken self-defeating uh, worldview relativism is um, being fooled to think that something is a person does not objectively make that thing a person it just makes us people who have been fooled um, as as believers in Jesus Bible believing Christians uh, who enter into the discussion about artificial intelligence I think we need to remember that the Bible actually reveals we have an essential non-physical component that definitively makes us who we are as humans as persons if we uh, create something that does not have that component then it's not a person, no matter how convincing that simulation might be. All right, I have no idea what your tastes are in movies, but if I were a time traveler, I would go back in time and say, Peter, um, consider buying this one, especially if you can get it for $12 or less. It's worth the gamble. Just buy it sight unseen, 12 bucks or less. Uh, even knowing how this movie ends, it's it's still a fascinating, intense, and thought-provoking experience. So one, in other words, that you'll want to watch again, and therefore will be worth having in your library. Uh, so yeah, it's, and it's got a bit of cool like action movie fighting that will have you both cringing and, and, and rooting for the good guy or good gal, I should say, at the same time. Uh, it's rated R for brutal violence and some language. All right, those are my thoughts. I'd love to get yours in the comments below uh, if you've seen Morgan um, or if you have. Do you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you about the movie? Uh, and then I hope, boom, you'll join us at Christian... Ge this is not the right sign. Boom, you'll join us at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth.